the Lewis structure of copper 2-phosphide, or Cu3P2, has copper, a metal, bonding with phosphorus, a non-metal. I know copper is a metal because it comes from the left side of this staircase of semi-metals. And phosphorus is a non-metal because it comes from the right-hand side. The reason that's important is metals and non-metals combine to make ionic compounds. And ionic compounds have a transfer of electrons from metal to non-metal. Now let's watch that happen. Phosphorus is here in group 15. It's drawn with five valence electrons. P, one, two, three, four, five. Copper, on the other hand, doesn't have a shortcut like that. The transition metals, most of them can have more than one charge. And so to decide how many electrons you draw the copper with, you have to look at its charge. Now it's here in the name if you were given the name, but it's also here in the formula. Copper had a positive two charge. Phosphorus had a minus three charge. And when you crisscross them, you brought those down as subscripts. The copper has a positive two charge. So I want you to draw a copper with two valence electrons. The last key bit is that nonmetals want a full outer shell of eight electrons to be stable. That's called the octet rule. And if this phosphorus brought five, it needs three more electrons to be stable. Well, this copper can help. It can contribute one, two electrons. But unfortunately, this phosphorus is not yet satisfied. It needs a full eight electrons, and it currently has five plus two is seven. So bring in another copper, one, two electrons in its outer shell, just like that one. And it can contribute that eighth electron to make that phosphorus stable. Great. Except this copper still has an extra electron to give away. Where's that going to go? The answer is another phosphorus with its five valence electrons. Copper can give an electron away there, but now that phosphorus is also unhappy. It has five plus one equals six electrons, and we need eight. Another copper will donate its electrons. Five plus one was six. There is its seventh. There, oh, I uh, drew that arrow in a bad place. There is its eighth. Now that phosphorus has a full eight electrons and all of the coppers have given away all of their valence electrons. To draw the final Lewis structure here, give yourself the phosphorus with eight electrons around it. I know it brought five, but it took three from various coppers. Three extra electrons give it a minus three charge. Give yourself some coppers. Those coppers had two electrons to start with, but gave them away, so don't draw any. And that is now a positive two charge, because minusing two negatives give you a positive. Now you're also supposed to have drawn two of these P's, so I'll do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with a minus three charge. And we're supposed to have three coppers in the end. There's a second one, uh, there's a third one. I like alternating my plus and minus charges, by the way. And here is my completed Lewis structure for copper 2-phosphide. It shows three copper atoms having given away their electrons to two phosphoruses. Done. Complete Lewis structure here, transfer of electrons shown here. Congratulations, you are done. Best of luck.